Welcome back to Watching Baseball. The year is 2015. The teams are the Royals versus the Mets. The first time in five years the NL is not the Cardinals or the Giants. The Mets beat the Cubs in the NLCS. The Murphy Show, if I remember correctly. And in the AL, the Royals are back. They lost to the Giants the year before. Same formula, gets them back. This was a fun World Series. Jake, you remember anything about this one? Royals added a couple important pieces. Um, you know, you and I went down a trade deadline road one day, and this this Royals team is on there. I mean, uh, you know, we they they added some guys, and the uh, they were the first team to come back after losing the World Series since the '89 A's, uh, who we're familiar with if you've been watching these. And yeah, man, I mean, the Mets, it's just uh, you almost get taken aback a little bit because I, I forget how many connecting dots there still are. I mean, between guys like DeGrom, Cespedes, Conforto, um, Syndergaard, and I think it was funny. A couple things jumped out from the Wikipedia was uh, they called these teams two of the best expansion teams, and they're talking about 1960s expansion, and it's just funny that we don't really think about teams like that but you know you you come up once you do another round of expansion you're no longer an expansion team yeah i do i it is just funny to think about that you know uh, when we compare them to other teams they might have had 50 more years to build whatever they built um and then they they said that the mets were noted for having four guys on their staff that threw 95 plus miles per hour so we're starting to see uh a turn there where that almost wouldn't be of note nowadays. And the Royals, it was contact, contact, contact. Put the ball in play, let them make mistakes, and uh, run. And people were mocking it at the time. Like, yeah, contact, contact, contact. And then, as we will see, it works. As always, these videos are brought to you by the shop at johnboymedia.com. You go to shop johnboymedia.com. You can get a plethora of shirts, mugs, hats you can get the hat that jake's wearing right now you can get this if you like our daily radio show which is called john boy and jake radio go check out that channel so you can get this shirt shop.johnboymedia.com let's dive right in we're going to game five the royals are up three to one but the mets have a lead going into the bottom of the ninth inning three more outs they win a game then it then the, then it's three to two and you know they got to win a lot but you know it's happening so let's jump right to that spot. Mustafa's job right here. Get the man to third. Our buddy Musa. Did I give it to you? Can I get it on my screen? Yeah. There you go. Ball one outside. Since 1969, no closer has blown three saves in a World Series. I mean, even it wasn't easy last night. Here's Familia. Still, not easy he's, tonight. he's on the... Did you hear the stat? And the mm. doing their what? Thing in the no closer has blown three saves in a World Series. Tough. So there's a runner on second. I, we skipped past that. Now 2-0. <clears throat> Terry Collins picking his fingers. Thing I was talking about, make sure he does not get that run at the third base. Exactly, and that's why it's a good place to be for the Royals, man. If you lose, it's not that much damage. Having you, a lot of fun. And if you win, you fucking win the World Series. Big swing from Moose on the 2-0 here. They, they know they've got him. To the right side, runner goes to third. Big swing. And Moustakis does his job. And that will be huge. Here's the reaction by Terry Collins after the double by Hosmer. Yeah, and again, we mentioned it, but shout out to Hosmer Stop for getting a double because that <laughs> makes the ground out to first worthwhile. Uh, it was two. They were up two. Harvey started, I believe. Is this when Harvey was like all dark night? It's like, I'm not leaving this game. And then he opened up the ninth inning with a walk. Kane stole second. Then Hosmer doubled him in. 
that's what happened. I mean, it was it was Harvey time for the Mets. I mean, we used to go to Mets games. We were all excited for Matt Harvey. And think about what else we just watched, Jim. Mad Bum. Mad Bum. Um, and think think about the person that Matt Harvey is. He probably thinks he's every every bit of that and more. It's true. I mean, he pitched a really good game. <laughs> yeah, he was, it was incredible. The Harvey times, man. And here. Padres great. Look at that. It's a really gutsy run home, but that was their whole strategy, was put pressure on the defense. So, And, I mean, we see all these little things that you're pointing to one player, this, that, or the other. And, I mean, Lucas Duda has never been known as a defender at any position. Um, so you're forcing him to make a perfect throw and put the tag on, and it's not even close. It's a pretty easy throw, too. Like he... <laughs> oh, hold on. Did you see the old man? Um, uh, the wife is in the pink scarf, and then there's an old man that just... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I am done. That whole That's row life. right there is just going... Look, everyone's got their hand on their head. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, like almost Just everyone besides away. the guy with double hood on the left. That's such a funny human reaction. Oh, he would have been dead at the plate. With the, I think and, so? Yeah, I think any semblance of a normal throw. Now two out, nobody on in the See if they give I us mean, another angle. Duda and Darno, you're, you're dealing with guys that aren't known for their defense in any way. I mean, well, I mean, we're talking about throw and catch. We're not talking about like a diving player. You're talking about throw and catch. I mean, in World Series with Hosmer, who's a pretty good base runner. I mean, he's, he's not necessarily a speed guy, but for a first baseman, he moves well. And like you said, this is what this team does. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that if, if he threw it into his glove, he would have been dead. But it's just if it's a perfect throw, yes. And I, I, that's not a throw that a lot of first basemen are great at. Yeah, that's not know. a play you do a lot. You do that play as a first baseman, what, three uh, times a year? I don't know. I think that's rather routine. It's just throwing it home. Uh, the I mean, circumstances. Like saying, for, for me, that's. That's like saying a jump shot in basketball. Like there's places that are just more comfortable to take a jump shot. Like a first baseman just doesn't make that throw a lot. Yeah, but it, it's, a, you know, it's a basic throw. You want your major leaguer to make that throw, but I mean, dude yeah. is a guy, you know, not a defensive dude. Uh, this goes tied for a while. How does he get out of this now? So that, w that would have been the third out. It would have been game yeah, over. Been game. That would have been an exciting finish. Place would have been nuts. Talk about challenging for Miller. Two out, nobody on. Three one pitch. Gordon launching one foul into right. So Gordon. Oh, I thought that loud noise was like the ball. That's when he went. Yeah, I mean, that's such a bad throw. Just tremendous. For it to be like an uncatchable throw. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, there's no excuse for that. I think if, if Darno can catch it, he's out. I don't think so. I think it's got to be on that side of the base path at least. But in that replay we just saw, Hosmer wasn't even in frame. That was a tough camera angle. The first one, it looks like he was right there. Cueto. Here's a trade deadline acquisition that I was stumbling through before. Here's a 3-2 pitch by Familia. To the right side. And the Got him. Descended tied into the bottom of the ninth. Do they show it again? 
Uh, Terry's reaction. I think that first angle was still the best. Like the live shot of it. Well, at this point right here, to decide to run, I don't think, I think because it was the Royals' motto and like their gameplay, like I don't think majority of teams and runners on third just automatically go there. Not when it's, yeah, I, I, because it's last out of the game. The, the first baseman I have is a big factor here. And Eric Hosmer is a special defensive first baseman. Lucas Duda is not. Uh, Lucas Duda is a guy you DH if you can. Hosmer's uh, a guy with a really good glove, and maybe, you know, he might have more in tune with that being a first baseman. And, uh, I mean, it helps with how far right is away from the bag where he has to make the play that he can get that momentum going. So, like, that's how far away he is when it releases his hand. Yep. So anything that Darno could have caught, he's just out and the game's over. I disagree a little bit. It's got to be a good throw. I think if he's got to come across, I don't think he's making the play. Like, he's in slide there. Yeah, you don't think across, if he catches that ball, he just turns and tags him easily? No. I, I think he's at a disadvantage. Hosmer can see what's coming. He can easily just sneak a hand in there. Yeah, it would like, have to be I, like I a swim move out. slide, like a cool slide from no, Hosmer. I don't, it doesn't have to be that special. I think he's dead right there. Like, I think if that ball's in Darno's glove, it's a like 80% out. Unless there's like some sort of cool slide Hosmer does. It's crazy. It's a crazy uh, send, like I said, because in if, if he doesn't run home, no one's like, you should have went because you're still the tying run on third base. Like, you'd be like, yeah, no, smart. Don't risk it. Yeah, it kind of goes into the thing from last time where it's like, do you, you trust your hitters, blah, blah, blah. But, um, hey, great play. Bartolo Colon. All right, I got to find. So it, it stays tied until the 12th. Here we are. Damn it. Ooh, it's a tough hat. We saw the shot of. Hmm. Easier to pull. All right, guess. Two and two. Who got the double? Remember, Alex Gordon just nine hits all year to the opposite field. Wasn't a double, I guess. It may not be long before. All right, so wait, Perez gets a, a leadoff single, and then they pinch run for it. Gerard Dyson, pretty good base runner himself. And now you're going to see the pitch runner Dyson come in. Yeah. It's again just little flare. Granderson. I forgot he was with this Mets team. I mean, this isn't so far ago, but then there's some things that make it feel so removed, like Harvey being dominant, Wright being at third, Granderson being on the Mets. Dyson comes off the bench to run for Salvador Perez. Batter is Alex Gordon. Addison Reed pitching. Worth repeating, the last time the Mets threw out a base dealer. The end of September. Like, I, I guess for me it was the, really if you're a Mets fan, every time you see Uris Familia come in the game the now, like, Dyson is on. connect the dot to the most recent World Series game. Uh, I think you got to at least give yourself a chance by pitching yeah. off if you feel like they're going to go. He's, uh, I mean, he's not their closer anymore. No, and he was on other teams and stuff. That's I guess that's part of it in my head. Like I traded him to the A's. Yeah. Maybe it's on the A's. Two steals this postseason for Gerard. And the Mets hadn't thrown anyone out all postseason. Up and away to the number seven hitter, Alex Gordon. Again, Darno, not a good defensive catcher either. What the running game does, it takes that pitcher out of his game. Slide step. Addison Reed. How did they feel about Addison Reed being in here? 
I mean, Nice already went after Familia. Didn't we see Bart? Bart threw a couple, right? He comes in after Reed. Let's see what Reed was doing this postseason. Bart had a nice, <laughs> had a nice World Series. Dude, up until this, this, Reed was doing really well. I mean, that is like the perfect pitch to throw on. It was like a fastball down the middle. Um, Reed, up until this point, had pitched 6.2 innings and only given up one earned run, and that was the very first game. So he had seven, seven outings in a row without an earned run up until this. So I guess I feel good about him. A little flare, believe. stolen base. Again, set up well for Gordon. Yeah, that was a big lead. You had to step the off there. The right side to get Dyson over. Ooh. Uh oh. Here in the East, it's November second. Solid let's go champ. Just dancing back there. Two and two. That was fun. Just the, the attention they have to pay to Dyson is totally It sounded like there was a lot of hissing. <laughs> Yeah. It's still a, a long road for Mets fans. You got to win three. They got to win one. So I don't know how. I feel like you'd be desensitized a little bit. I mean, you're thinking if... If we get that play, we win a game, and then we've got one more at home, right? Or am I miscounting That's games? Down, a full count. Uh, what's this I'm game? Miscounting games. This it's is game, game five. five. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe there's a home field thing there. You protect your home field, give yourself a chance. But Royals, Royals were out for blood after their game seven loss the year before. Flores is doing so much. You hear him yelling? And well, shit? It's, it's funny, man. I mean, how often that's called the window play because kind of the rule of thumb is if there's a window between the shortstop and the base runner, you throw it back there. But they're in like full chicken dance mode. That it's like it's the World Series. Are we doing this every pitch? And Flores is making so much noise back there. I mean, look at that. You can hear him. That's a nightmare as the pitcher. Yeah, you're really not focusing on pitching that much. At all. And now Flores is like, hey, watch me, pitch, watch me. It's like, dude, he's trying to pitch. I got something going on up here, Wilmer. Yeah, yeah, there's a little something distracting me from you. Sorry, man. Because his best pitch the slider, easier to pull. I like Escobar saying, relax, guys. Be badass if they just like hard bunted to shortstop. Flores broke for second and it was just like an infield single. Yeah, they got second base mic'd up. That's why you can hear him so well. You can hear Dyson's like foot on it. All that, and now he's at third. And the going to run 90 feet away as Gordon advances the runner, and we've seen the Royals do that 
Oh, time no. to get nasty, Addison. That's uh, a hat. We saw the shot of the pitching coach, Dan Warden. So now they they go to Bart. Not yet. Oh no, they went to the pinch hitter is Cologne. <laughs> I think if he's swinging that pitch didn't look great. No, didn't look like a, a competitive pitch. Ooh. Yo, who is this batter? Christian Cologne? That's what I'm looking at right now. I mean, he, uh, infielder. He had about 100 at bats that year. He had a nice year. He's putting the ball in play. No power, but. He was on the Reds last year. Got eight games in. Name doesn't ring a bell. It probably never did. Three for six last year. Huge. Fouled it. All sliders from Reed. That was not as far away. I mean, this is an NL game in the 12th inning, so we're we are towards the the end of the bench. Oh yeah. Basically, right at the right-handed hitter. It's another meaty pitch. That slider buried down away is a tough pitch to hit. Cologne hit 290 during the regular season and 107. His best pitch was the slider that he got the check swing call on. His first of the postseason. That's the same pitch as the first pitch of the at bat, basically. This is awesome how mic'd up everything was here. Right? Just a classic attaboy and a hell yeah. For those who wondered, when Orlando came in earlier in the game in the seventh, Dyson was left on the But that pitch, again, looked like the first pitch of the at-bat, which a lot of meaty pitches there. There is one... Decent pitch that at bat. So again, it's Royals baseball, man. It was a bloop and then speed. And then, I mean, that's a nice hit, but doesn't mean anything if you don't have the bloop and the speed there. And they're just getting started this inning. It's worked out. Again, these managers know their players, man. They know their situation. Paul Orlando, another name. Should I know Paul He's Orlando? Paolo, right? What? Yeah. Paolo. Oh, Paolo? Paolo. Should I know, know his story? Nope. Okay. Look at that. Look at that guy. Slider, slider, and that's that's life. You've you've chosen that life. Paulo had a nice year the next year, and then was garbage. Okay. Dude, how long have the Mets have bad defense for? Yes. Like five years. Since Ray Ordonez. All I remember is like Mike Francesa from the early on days just would fucking get on Murphy so bad. He's a butcher. He's a butcher at second base. Oh, I remember the chapstick move. That got made fun of a ton. Put the chapstick on after an error because you don't know what to do with yourself and everyone's watching you. It's a fielder's choice, E4. 
Well, nighttime champs. How many? Straight night with it's a fielder's choice E4. Second straight night with an error. Second. I thought it was more than that. Still not good. World Series. Not ideal. Ball one for Madison Reed. Should that have been that, two? Look at that throw from Duda. Look at the play the by Murphy. We'll have Duda, Defense counts. You think that would have been double play right there? Reed now trying to keep it a one run game. Um who was running the first? Paolo Orlando? Yeah, Paolo. I I doubt it. Lead runner. Out. Should get an out. The Mets were three outs away in the Paolo Orlando the and Christian Colon. Yeah, don't remember those names. The Royals went to work against Harvey and Firm the handshake from that fan who's leaving. Not staying for this bullshit. <laughs> we put ourselves through it again. See you later. They had us tricked. They had us tricked. Put so much pressure on. Deals the bag, gets the second. They're stepping off, throwing off. He looks incredibly high. This whole half inning. Might be. Who told him to step off? Did you hear that? Either Flores or the runner to step off. I hope it was the runner. It's a good base runner move, yeah. The reversal on the decision to lift Matt Harvey. He went back out, allowed a walk and a double. The Royals tied it. A big Royal they set. Lead it for the first time all night. Here in the 12th. What's Addison Reed throwing? I mean, that was 91. That's the meaty slider he keeps trying to put in his own. Fastball slider. Yeah, it takes all 25. Christian Colon just joined the party. <laughs> the 2 2 again. Here's a 2 2. Escobar spoils it. Fastball again. Tell you, there, there's not a person that's watching this game that's sitting there thinking you're not going to let Matt Harvey go back out there. Back in the ninth inning. How many pitches had Harvey thrown? The decision was to lift him. They went back on it when Matt uh, Harvey said no way. See. Can't blame him. 111. That's his final. Harvey went out. The leadoff walk, he stayed in. Gave up the double. The Royals tied it. 2-2 pitch. He threw. Down the line. One run scores. That's Cologne. Holding it third, Orlando. And it's 4-2 Kansas City in the 12th. Harvey threw 10 in that inning. So he was at 101. They sent him back for the ninth and not their closer. Yeah, pretty brutal call. I think, like, uh, who's announcing this? Like they said, even in foresight, people were like, why? Yeah. Well, I mean, didn't, didn't they say Familia was going for his third blown save? <laughs> yeah, I guess that plays a part into it. There you go. But uh, they also had, uh, you know, Nice. I don't know. You'd, you'd have to do your closer. Yeah, you can't do not familiar Harvey. <laughs> Addison <With> Reed. <laughs> he was on a good stretch. Reed has pitched in every game in this I, I believe Reed, after this intentional walk, they take him out and bring in but it has Big been Sexy. Bart. The numbers for Cologne. Pretty good numbers. With Kane now. But this does not end well for him. And yeah, man, at this and point, you know, not to go LOL Mets. I love that pitch. But uh, 
I mean, if you're a Mets fan, you're you're at the World Series, extra innings. Is this our year? And now it's the 12th. You're down two, and Bart's in? Like a guy who is good for you, but he's also like a walking. Yeah. And that's the series. Dancing on graves. Her friend Drew Butera in the background. Bart looking good, though. Still looks great on the field. No argument here. How many years did Bart pitch after this? Hoping he comes back this year. Wanted to. So this was 15. I mean, he pitched into 2018. So so he's 45 years old. He's 42 here. Or 43, depending on his birthday. So let's find the celebration. Just... Ready to go. Speed and contacted to death. This was a really cool story. Like this Royals team. In fact, they went to the World Series and people thought it was like a fluke. Like no way. And then they go back the very next year and win it. Yeah, it's, I think the thing that we're downplaying and we should have probably hammered home more at the start because uh, we said it last time was, I mean... They, it was a five-inning game. If you did not have a lead on these Royals after five innings, you were done. Their, yeah. their bullpen was just absolutely filthy. Um, I mean, is it Wade Davis, Herrera was going nuts. Um, uh, Wade Davis, um, Danny Duffy, Herrera, Ryan Madsen. And uh, um, Luke um, Ochevar. Yeah. I can never remember how to pronounce that last name. Those guys combined. It was just done. Those guys combined for 8, 10, 19.1 innings pitched with one earned run, the bullpen, in five, I guess that's, in five that, games. That's, that's kind of the mix there where it's like, okay, you look at this team, and, yeah, you know, you're not going to see your traditional traditional power or maybe lineup you'd expect. But at the same time, if you were down after five innings, you were going to get beat the oldest of old-fashioned ways, just like that. We we had Butera, the catcher who just caught that, on our podcast. He was awesome. But manager of the Royals said his biggest regret was not having Salvi back there to catch the last out. It's tough. <laughs> and look, the celebration gets kind of messed up because the batter gets in the way. Then it's all good. Oh, no, we joked about that on the podcast. They both go for the jump. He was like, yeah, yeah we didn't have it planned out. And then we asked him what he did with the ball, and he said he kept it for a little bit. Then he realized, you know, this isn't mine, and donated it to uh, the Royals or Museum or something. Do we have, like, a rhythmic chant there? Some rhythm. Sounded like we had an in unison, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Love that. That dude's a head taller than everyone else. Yeah, that's a big boy. Who was that? Ochevar? I don't know. Is Chris Young on this team? Yes. Chris Young, 6'10". Oh. Dude, Chris Young had a long career. Johnny Gomes, heart attack survivor. Holy shit, there's two Chris Youngs, Jake, that played in the MLB from two, one played from 2006 to 2018, one from 2004 to 2017. Generic names. 
Got the outfielder and the pitcher. A total franchise effort. He was part of the only other world championship for the Royals. The great George Brett. They've had to have some nice exchanges, right? The two Chris Youngs? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Be denied. Went to spring training with one mission. This time, win the last game of the year. Set a goal, win the division. <laughs> that was cool. The All Star game, eight of them there. Let's win the game. Get David Wright advantage. didn't see a lot of good Check days that. after this. That's a bummer. Here for the lead, win home it's field tough. advantage. Check that. And five outs away from elimination in the ALDS would not be denied. Then would not be Ooh. denied tonight. Ninth inning, down two runs to a dominant Matt Harvey. All right. See if we get any quick interviews. Man, that's a weird half inning if you're the Royals. Real nice glove toss. That glove never I mean, landed. They all were thinking about it hard. That's all you're thinking about for three outs. How high I want to you're throw my glove. Five. You're up five in extras. No, like Gordon's like, all right, I'm gonna grab my gum, point up. Zobris is like, I'm going glove toss. Like all these all these are a little premeditated because I mean you had to. You knew. You're not a human if you're up five in extra innings saying like, well guys, let's keep the screws on here. It's like, no, we've won. Tears in your eyes. First of all, tell me, how did you stay ready during this game? Well, I just, uh, you know, I had a lot in the cage. I made sure I was moving around. Uh, you know, Johnny Gomes was just taking me under his wing, letting me know what I needed to do to get ready in certain situations. And, uh, you know, that's when you bring a guy over, you know. But um, I just stay ready, you know, moving up and down, waiting for my chance. Christian, you didn't even know if you were going to get in this game. Your last RBI was 41 days ago. How good Jeez. did this one feel? It felt great. This put us in the spot. But if, uh, it, if it wasn't for... Uh, boring. Good job, Christian Colon. I'm sorry that I forgot your name. I definitely knew it at one point because I, I watched this. He had one at bat that 2015 postseason. Made it count. Made it Game count. Game winner Jay. in the World Series. Not bad. Not a bad one at bat. Well, thank you guys for watching this with us. We appreciate it. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with another episode of watching baseball, unless this came out on Saturday, and then we won't be, but I believe this is a Monday episode. Also, on Mondays, Watching Baggage comes out on John Boy and Jake TV YouTube channel, and those are an incredible amount of fun. So if you're going to look more time to kill, go check those out, and uh, we love you, and we'll see you later. Eat a bug.